So you're thinking about moving to the St. George, Utah area. In this video, we're gonna talk about the cost of living. Uh, first, we'll start with some national data and see how we compare. And then if you stick around till the end, I'll take you to some of the local grocery stores and gas stations so you can see it for yourself. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything about living in St. George and the surrounding areas, make sure to subscribe and tap the bell for notifications so you're the first to know about what's happening in St. George. So as I mentioned, we're talking about the cost of living in the St. George area. Bestplaces.net has some great info on how we compare to the national average. If it's above the 100 mark, then we're higher than national, and if it's below, or below the 100, then we're lower than the national average. St. George, Utah gets a Best Places Cost of Living Index of 109.9, which means the total cost of housing, food, childcare, transportation, healthcare, taxes, and other necessities is 9.9% higher than the U.S. average and 3.8% higher than the average for Utah. To live comfortably in St. George, Utah, it's recommended that you need a minimum annual income of $92,880 for a family and 42,000 for a single person. Now let's go ahead and look at the chart for a little more detail. So right there at the top is the overhaul, the, the overall, the 109.9. And then we have the grocery, which is 93.7, so below the national average. And like I mentioned, we'll actually go to the grocery store so you can see what that means for the cost of milk and eggs and bread and, and those type of things. Um, next we have healthcare, which is above the national average at a 111.2. And then we have our housing, and it's 144.8, which is what is really pushing us over the national average. And for some people, this is not a big deal. They're coming from maybe a higher cost area, have equity in a home, so they are paying cash for a home here or large down payments, so they don't feel this as much. But for our young families, uh, young adults who are moving here or live here and want to stay, it's a huge challenge for them to find homes that they can afford to rent or to buy. And um, it can be a little discouraging. And um, I have loved seeing though that our cities are working on attracting other companies here with higher paying jobs. I love seeing people who come up with um, opportunities to build a business here that fills the need and provides for their family or they do remote work and um, so lots of people are creative in finding a way that they can afford to live here because the lifestyle is worth it. Um, you'll see on here that it says the median home cost is 485000 I looked that up and we are actually now at 535000 um, But also um, the United States average, according to Realtor.com, median is now 420000 So it has obviously increased as well. All right, if you look at the utilities, it's 95.3, so below the national average. Um, I've had a lot of clients um, talk about how they love how much lower the utilities are here, so that's a good thing. Um, Dixie Power is the cheapest for electricity, so if it's really important to you um, to make sure you live in an area they cover, just make sure that we know about that and we'll kind of pinpoint that area for you. Um, Next is transportation, which is 75.2, so quite a bit below the national average. I think a lot of this has to do with that everything is so close here. Um, the commute time to and from work is pretty um, low compared to a lot of the other areas, and we don't find you know, people being stuck in traffic um, and the long commutes, so that helps keep that down for us. Um, and then miscellaneous is 93.7, so also below the national average. So as you can see, most of the things on the chart do stay below the national average, but our housing and our healthcare do push it up for us. So let's go check out the grocery store. I'm in Harmons right now, so we'll go downstairs and check out some of the cost of food here, and we'll check out another grocery store and some gas stations.
Carmen's is kind of our higher end grocery store in the area. Um, the prices are a bit higher, but the atmosphere and the quality is amazing. Um, I love their artisan breads and their produce is always really good quality and customer service is great. So convenience um, also gets us there sometimes. Um, and they have a gas station attached, so we will check out the gas prices before we leave. All right, now we're over at the gas pumps at Harmon's. Um, as you can see, uh, these are the prices in December. Um, of course, it fluctuates all the time. Um, I will tell you, Harmon's has never been the cheapest place to get gas, um, but they have really great customer service. They've helped pump my gas before on a really cold day. Um, and they help me put air in my tires when I need it. So it's a great place to stop, especially if I'm in a hurry. I can usually get in and out of here really quick. Okay, we're at Maverick, which is my favorite place to get gas. Almost always the cheapest place to go and usually pretty quick to get in and out. Um, there is one place that's a little bit cheaper. And if you move here, ask me about it and I'll tell you. All right, and uh, one other thing I want to mention, if you are traveling here, don't get gas right off the interstate, the I-15. Off the exits, a lot of these gas stations have upped the price so much. So drive into town a bit to get gas, look for a Maverick, get cheaper gas. All right, let's head over to another grocery store. All right, we're now at Lynn's Supermarket, which is your pretty average supermarket, but in a good way. Um, do a lot of shopping here. There's quite a few of them, um, easy, nice layout. So we're gonna go on in and check out the prices and you can compare them to where you live. Let's go. Thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions, all my contact information is in the description below. Talk to you soon.